Hey everyone, welcome back. This is my review of Fate Khalid Episode 6. Or Fate Khalid, sec the second season, Episode 6, entitled On the Other Side of Lies and Face Aid. All I have to say about this episode at first here is just, <clears throat> wow. Okay, I honestly think this is the best episode in Fate Khalid yet so far, including all of first season and all of this season so far, okay? For two major reasons. Number one, there was a lot of plot progression, okay? They actually brought up the fucking Holy Grail War. If you've watched Fate Stay Night or Fate Zero or played any of the vis any of the uh, two main visual novels that there is, uh, there's Fate Stay Night and there's actually a sequel one to it, or any of the games or re read the Fate Zero light novel, or read any of the Fate Stay Night, or Fate Zero um, mangas, or anything. Or, or have, well, actually, no, I don't th really think there's anything released yet, except for, like, a, some minor information we found out over the years of the first three Holy Grail Wars. But still, you know about the Holy Grail War. The Holy Grail War is the main focus of the Fate franchise. So far, it hasn't really been of the spin-offs here. But in terms of, like, the main Fate franchise, it's the main, like, center point. Seven servants get summoned to seven masters to fight each other in order to acquire the Holy Grail War, which will supposedly give you, grant you any wish. Ilya was meant to become the fucking Holy Grail. Okay, she was meant to become the Holy Grail, and Kuro was actually apparently like her sister or something. This is that's what I'm guessing. It didn't specifically state that, but that's what I'm guessing though. And was her she was her memories were she was sealed away inside of Ilya as dormant memories. Okay. Or wait, it was either that or oh wait, no, it might have actually been that that her mother sealed away her memories, and then in the series. Her memories actually manifested into an actual person in Kuro. Or it was technically Ilya. Yeah, her mother referred to her as Ilya, so I'm going to guess that it's the second thing, actually. And Ilya was meant to become the Holy Grail. Now, one thing you don't understand yet is why the fuck that, that their mother would willingly, or Irisabel, would re willingly do that to her own daughter? I mean... Even if she was forced, you'd think that if she was a good mother, she would, you know, refuse it and, and get herself killed trying to, trying to protect her daughter. Now, one thing I do have to say... Hold on a sec. You're good. Now, one thing I do have to say is that she did mention that, I guess, the Einsmers destroyed the Holy Grail, so the Einsmers are no more. Uh, if that's the case, and that's actually not canon, in the canon, after sometime after the Fifth Holy Grail War, Rin Tosaka and a Waver, who was the master of writer in Fate Zero, actually worked together to dismantle the Grail. So if the Einsburns really destroyed the Grail, then one, that's actually not canon, and but I don't have any issues with that really, and this is a spinoff after all. And two, like how would that work exactly? Because Elia was supposed to become the Grail, so wouldn't they have to destroy Elia for that? I don't know. That's kind of confusing. Or maybe, or maybe uh, her memories were sealed away, and that prevented her from becoming the Grail. Maybe that's it. Okay, that would actually make a lot of sense. That would actually be really cool. I just thought of that just now. Okay, so that would. So that's my theory right there. Maybe uh, Irisabel actually sealed away Elia's memories. Because somehow that would actually prevent her from becoming the Grail, so she actually did it to protect her own daughter. Okay, I, I, I guess I could actually buy that, but it has to specifically state it or else it's not true. Okay. So, yeah. But the second thing, that I, the reason why I love this episode so much, is the feels that it gives you. Like, in one, like, I, I figured that Kuro would become a, I'm just going to call it Kuro instead of Ili, it's a lot less confusing. I figured that Kuro would become more, uh, of a sympathetic character later on, but I never expected they'd be able to turn her into such a sympathetic character in one fucking episode. One fucking episode. This was great, okay? 
because I, kind of disappointing though that she actually didn't disappear. Even though I'm glad in a sense, it would have added a lot of needed tragedy to it. Because like she almost disappears twice, but ends up being saved. The first time she's saved by a uh, by a uh, Elia because she used up uh, too much uh, mana, so Elia provides her with some more mana. And then the second time, I forget what the reason is, but she uh, almost disappears again. But then she makes a wish because she was meant to become the Holy Grail, so she makes a wish, and then she ends up getting saved again. So she ends up getting saved twice. She might disappear later on. The reason why I'm saying this is because Rin and uh, Livia still need to acquire the cards, and she is the Archer card, basic, basically. Either that or the Archer card's inside of her, but either way, she might disappear later on. Be even if Rin and Livia decide to go against their orders... I'm sure that the Mages Association, whether it's in this season or the next season, because I know there's going to be a next season due to there being a third and final manga in this series, um, will probably send some Mages from the Mages Association to acquire her, so, and the rest of the, of the cards, so, you know. One thing I asked, honestly I expected was like a uh, sent copy of like, Miu to come out in this episode. I'm glad. I'm glad it didn't. But I expected that because that's what happened. Like ever since uh, Ilya be, used the Archer card on herself, I'm glad it didn't happen. It makes more sense this way. But still, I kind of did expect that to happen. But anyways, though, I loved this fucking episode. Okay, that plot progression and plot twist and everything like with the plot like that, and that though them feels. Especially at the end. Really, this almost moved me to tears, and that's not an easy thing to accomplish. Even Fate Zero, as depressing as it was, didn't make me cry. <laughs> so yeah, you know they're doing. You know that Silverlink's doing something fucking right here, okay? And Fate Zero was written by fucking General Bucci. So yeah, but anyways, though. Oh man. There was a little bit of fan service at the bath shower scene, um, but not too much. Um, it was pretty much just uh, Irisabel and Kuro, because Ili and Miu didn't really get too much. It was pretty much just Irisabel and Kuro, and I'm not really going to play about it because that was the scene where we got all the fucking feels, and the feels were so intense that it really make allows me to completely fucking ignore the fan service. It really does. The fan service is not over, way too overbearing. For that scene, because if it was, then that would be kind of fucking sad. <laughs> Anyways, though, I think I'm gonna wrap up this review. Though, amazing episode. I can't see how they could top this, but I'm sure they. Well, I I guess they probably could, but it would take a lot for them to top this. Cause this, <sighs> this might put at least for the time being, Fate Khalid on my in my at least in my top five of anime of the season so far. Anyway. That could change later on, but at least so far. Alright. So anyways, overall, hope you enjoyed this review, guys. Except you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.